Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the 8th lecture of open course on diffusion in multi-component solids. In this lecture, we will go over the statistical model for evaluating the enthalpy of mixing for a regular solution and again to give a flavor of multi-component thermodynamics, I have treated ternary solution in this lecture. So, last class we analyzed ideal solutions. Today, we will try to analyze uh, Gibbs free energy of mixing for non ideal solutions. So, delta G m is equal to delta H m minus T delta S m. Unlike an ideal solution, for a non ideal solution, delta H mixing is not 0, right. it has a non-zero value. So, heat is either evolved or heat is absorbed uh, during the process of mixing. Why it would happen? Because of the interactions, because A A, B B and A B interactions are different and when we replace some of the A A and B B pairs with A B pairs in the solution there is a heat effect, the potential energy changes, so the enthalpy changes. Now, when this is so, when A A, B B and A B interactions are not same, then in real solutions, the mixing will not be random, right, because there will be some preference for the nearest neighbor pairs. For example, if A B bonds are stronger than A A and B B bonds, then there will be a tendency to form or there will be a tendency to maximize A B bonds. On the other hand, if A B bonds are weaker, there will be a tendency to form A A and B B bonds and minimize the number of A B bonds, right. So, there will be a kind of short range order associated with the difference in the interactions and so the mixing process will not be completely random and so delta S mixing will not be same as that for an ideal mixing where we assume random mixing, right. But in order to understand this interaction effect, let us try to simplify the model, ok. So, let us assume that delta H m is not 0, still delta S m is equal to delta S m i d. So, this is the regular solution model. So, now we need to evaluate the uh, enthalpy of mixing, you know delta H m at constant temperature and pressure, you can write this as delta U plus P delta V we make further assumption that delta V is negligible. And so, delta H m just becomes equal to change in internal energy. Further, temperature is constant. So, we do not need to uh, consider the changes in kinetic energy. So, delta H m is equal to delta E m, where E denotes the potential energy part. And the change in potential energy is only because of the changes in the types of pairs or changes in the number of particular bonds A A B B or A B in a binary solution. Okay. So, let us try to evaluate this and let us consider a ternary solution for example. So, 
we are considering one mole of solution formed by mixing of and one atoms of one and two atoms of two and and three atoms of three. So let us denote their potential energy before mixing as E1 and potential energy after mixing as E2 Now, if we consider the solution after mixing, how many different types of bonds will be there? Oh, no, we are considering ternary solution. There will be of course, 1 1. So, the types of bonds we are considering will be 1 1, 2 2, 3 3. Then, there will also be dissimilar atom interactions so or bonds so it will be 1 2 1 3 2 3 right so there will be six types of bonds Let us say there are P11 number of 1 1 type of bonds and each bond has an energy E11. Similarly, P22 number of bonds each having energy E22, P3 number of 3 3 bonds each having energy E33, P12 bonds with energy E12 per bond, P13 bonds with energy E13 and P23 bonds with energy E23. So, what will be the total energy after mixing? Yeah. If we take a particular bond, multiply by energy per bond. So, we have P11 times E11 plus P22 times E22 plus P33 times E33 plus P12 times E12 plus P13 times E13 plus P23 times E23. And what will be the energy before mixing? Before mixing, there will be no dissimilar bonds, right? So, only 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 3 bonds, and their numbers will be obviously different. So, let us assume they are P11 prime, P22 prime, and P33 prime. In that case, total potential energy before mixing will be P11 prime E11 plus P. P22 prime E22 plus P33 prime E33 and so delta Em we can write as E2 minus E1 that will be P11 minus P11 prime times E11 plus P22 minus P22 prime times E22 plus P33 minus P33 prime times E33 plus the terms related to dissimilar bonds P12 times E12 plus P13 times E13 plus E to 3 times E to 3. 
So, now all we need to do is to evaluate this number of bonds. So, to do that let us apply a balance equation for number of bonds. So, if we try to find the total number of bonds and if we write as total number of atoms of type 1 times number of bonds per atom. So, if we consider total number of 1 atoms multiplied by number of bonds per atom. So, how many types of bonds atoms of types 1 will be involved in? They will be either 1 1 or 1 2 or 1 3. Right? So, if we do this for 1 1 type of bond then essentially we are counting it twice right. So, 1 for this one atom again this bond is counted during the second one atom. So, this has to be 2 times p 1 1 and for the dissimilar type of bonds we are counting only once. So, that should be equal to p 1 2 plus p 1 3 and if the left hand side if we see total number of 1 atoms is n 1 and the number of bonds per atom should be equal to the coordination number let us call it z and so we can get p 1 1 is basically 1 half n 1 z minus 1 half p 1 2 minus 1 half p 1 3. Similarly, we can apply this for atoms of type 2 and also atoms of type 3 and we will get p 2 2 is equal to 1 half n 2 z minus number of dissimilar bonds in which 2 is involved 1 half p 1 2 minus 1 half p 2 3 and p 3 3 should be equal to 1 half n 3 z minus 1 half p 1 3 minus 1 half p 2 3. Now, if we apply this equation before mixing where uh, we, we essentially have pure 1, pure 2 and pure 3 right. So, before mixing if we consider element 1 that will be essentially this will remain same n 1 times z should be equal to 2 times p 1 1 prime. because there are no dissimilar bonds and so p 1 1 prime is essentially 1 half n 1 z. Similarly, p 2 2 prime will be 1 half n 2 z and p 3 3 prime should be 1 half n 3 z. So, now if you substitute for p 1 1 and p 1 1 prime in this equation can find delta E m p 1 1 minus p 1 1 prime. So, these terms will get cancelled 1 half n 1 z, 1 half n 2 z and 1 half n 3 z. So, you get essentially minus half p 1 2 e 1 1 minus half 
P13, E11, minus half P12, E22, minus half P23, E22, minus half P13, E33, minus half P23, E33, plus this term will be P12, E12 plus P13, E13 plus P23, E23. If we rearrange, so essentially what we have found delta H m, this is equal to delta H m, yeah. Sir, how can we assume that the coordination number for the all the three type of atoms can be same? Okay, so that is a good question. So, there is an assumption that we are making here. We are starting with same crystal structure as the crystal structure of the solution. Right. That is how we systematically form a thermodynamic solution. For example, in a binary, if we want to form a solution between A and B, which is FCC, right, we first bring pure A to FCC structure, we bring pure B to FCC structure and then mix the two to form the final FCC solution. Okay. So, if A and B are if uh, stable as FCC, then we just have to consider A and B in stable phases. But suppose B is not stable as FCC, B is stable as HCP, so we first have to convert HCP to FCC, there will be some Gibbs free energy change associated with it. And then we mix the two to form the final solution which is FCC. Okay. So, that is the assumption, good question and that is why we are considering the coordination number is the same. So, we rearrange this, what we get is if we take the terms related to so P12, E12, so we have P12, P12, and P12. times E 1 2 minus E 1 1 plus E 2 2 by 2 similarly plus P 1 3 times E 1 3 minus E 1 1 plus E 3 3 by 2 plus P 2 3 times E 2 3 minus E 2 2 plus E 3 3 divided by 2. Okay, so, essentially we are multi multiplying the number of dissimilar bonds with the difference between the energy of that dissimilar bond and the average of the similar type of bonds. Right. So, if we write this for binary for example, this will be delta H m is equal to we are considering A B solution then P A B times E A B minus E A A plus E B B by 2 and this will be 0 if E A B is equal to average of A A and B B bond energy. Right? 
if E A B is equal to E A A plus E B B by 2, delta H mixing is 0 and then it is an ideal solution, right. So, for a solution to be an ideal solution, what we initially said is the interactions have to be same, but it can be little more relaxed as long as the A B bond energy is equal to the average of A A and B B bond energies we can still get an ideal solution. If we have a ternary solution, then that has to be true for each of the dissimilar pair, then solution is an ideal solution. Even if for one of the pair that is not true, then you will have some non-zero value of delta H m and the solution will be non-ideal. Okay. So, now to look into this further, we need to evaluate P i j s, where i and j are different types of atoms. So, P 1 2, P 1 3, P 2 3 for ternary. So, how do we evaluate P i j? Number of i j pairs. If we know the total number of pairs and multiply it by the probability that a particular pair is an i j pair will get P i j. So, P i j is equal to total number of atom pairs multiplied by that probability that a given pair is an i j pair. So, this first term will be how many total number of atom pairs will be there? This will be simply n a z by 2, right? total number of atoms times number of bonds per atom and since we are counting each bond twice, so we divide by 2. What will be this? So, if we have a crystal structure with given number of atom pairs. So, what is the probability that a selected pair, let us say this one is an i j pair. So, how we select the pair? We select the first atom and then the next nearest neighbor, right. So, what is the probability that the first atom is an I atom? If we consider random solution which we are considering here, right, then the probability that a selected atom is nothing but the mole fraction of that atom, right multiplied by the probability that the next atom is an j atom which is x j this will be x i times x j or we can select first atom to be a j atom and the next one to be an i atom in that case it will be x j x i right. so this will be x i x j plus x j x i. So, this will be basically 2 x i x j and so p i j becomes n a z x i x j. So, we substitute there for ternary we get delta h m is equal to n a z times E 1 2 minus E 1 1 plus E 2 2 by 2 times x 1 x 2 plus n a z time E 1 3 minus E 1 1 plus E 3 3 by 2 times x 1 x 3 plus times 
times e to 3 minus e to 2 plus e 3 3 by 2 times x 2 x 3. If we denote this term as omega i j, then we have delta h m is equal to omega 1 2 x 1 x 2 plus omega 1 3 x 1 x 3 plus omega 2 3 x 2 x 3 where omega i j is nothing but n a z e i j minus e i i plus e j j divided by 2. Clear? So, we have the expression for molar enthalpy of mixing in terms of bond energies of different types in the solution. So, if we consider the binary solution then delta H mixing in that case will be should be equal to omega a b x a x b. Since there is only one term omega, let us we can just call it omega, where omega is equal to n a z times e a b minus e a a plus e b b by 2. Now, when a b bond energy as we have seen is same as or is equal to the average of a a and b b bond energies then delta h m is 0 and the solution is ideal. But when e a b is less than average of a a and b b bond energies omega is less than 0 which means delta h m is less than 0. So, essentially what this means is if a b bonds are stronger, the stronger bonds means lesser bond energy right. So, when a b bonds are stronger than average of a a and b b bonds, then the enthalpy of mixing is negative which means heat will be released during the process of mixing. We have seen when we st uh, studied the Rawls law and the Henry's law or how the vapor pressures vary with composition that we studied right. So, that time if you remember if a b bonds are stronger than a a or b b bonds we said that the evaporation rate or the intrinsic evaporation rate of a will come down by going into the solution from pure state right that corresponded to the negative deviation from ideality. So, here it means that negative deviation of ideality also means that delta H mixing is negative. Similarly, if A B bonds are stronger than A A or B B which means in this case if E A B is greater than average of A A and B B bond energies then omega is greater than 0 and delta H mixing is greater than 0 which means heat will be absorbed during the process of mixing. This is physically you can it is obvious right you can see it if A B bonds are weaker which means A B bonds have higher energy than average of A A and B B and by forming solution you are replacing some A A and some B B bonds with A B bonds. So, you are replacing stronger bonds with weaker bonds you are replacing 
bonds with lower energy with bonds with higher energy which means energy has to be provided to form the solution okay? and that is why delta H will be positive. Okay. So, this is important we went over this model in little bit details because it is important to understand how the interactions between the atoms give rise to the changes in the Gibbs free energy basically changes in the enthalpies and entropies because they also affect the diffusion especially the cross effects right. Because of these different interactions the atom jumps will be biased in a multi component system and so it is important to understand this how these atom interactions affect the Gibbs free energy changes. So, now if we plot for an AB solution, so for a regular solution delta G m regular you can write it as delta H m regular minus T delta S m id. Delta H m regular we are now talking of binary AB solution we know this will be omega xa xb plus rt xa ln xa plus xb ln xb. Now, if we try to plot delta hm, delta sm and delta gm, when let us say omega is less than 0, when omega is less than 0, delta H m will be negative right. So, omega x a x b has a shape something like this. So, this is delta H m. Delta S m regular is same as delta S m i d. So, we know it has a shape it will be positive always and so if we evaluate delta G m at each of the composition it will be negative everywhere. So, this is delta S m and this is delta G m this is x p. What if omega is positive? Delta S m will still be positive everywhere, but now delta H m is positive. And so, delta G m you will see the magnitudes of delta G m will be would be lesser than what it would be for negative omega. So, as this becomes more and more positive what happens? This curve will increasing it will also affect the curvature of delta G m right. And when delta H m is very high, you will see there will be a negative curvature developed on the delta G m curve. So, this delta G m curve corresponds to this delta H m. We are still assuming ideal or random mixing. So, delta S m will not change for assumption of random mixing, but then because delta H m is becoming more and more positive it will affect the curvature and at beyond certain value of delta H m it is just it will just develop a negative curvature in between. Now, this is very important 
because it will affect the stability of the solution. Okay. And how it will affect? We will see in the next class. Any questions so far? It is all clear? Okay, thank you.